Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm actually gonna spend a little time um, walking you through my thinking in building my 992 GTS, which I'm expecting to land any day now or week now. It's getting very, very close, and we'll talk about that at the end. But uh, as many of you know, I did have a 992 GT3, which um, when I spec'd it, it was more, uh, just geared for like more track and uh, in practice it just wasn't as usable as i would have liked so i decided to get rid of that and move towards a gts so that is what we're going to be talking about today uh, let's jump right in okay so um what i decided to do was go with a two-wheel drive gts because i i do still really love many of the aspects of the GT3, um, mainly being real wheel drive, all wheel drive, I don't need it. I live in California. We don't really have crazy weather here. So uh, that's not a concern for me, but I did want to make sure that whatever I spec is going to be fun to drive. So um, that is exactly why I chose the two wheel version. Um, but I didn't want it to be so far hardcore that it almost was the GT3 because that's exactly why I don't have that anymore. Um, but here we go. First things first, color choices. You know, when I first got my uh, 992 GT3, I loved the color. Um, and because I only had the car for a short period of time, I just wasn't done with shark blue. So I did spec it in shark blue. I think it looks really, really nice in this color. Um, as you can see, it, 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 just, it just pops in the right ways. It's not too flashy. It's not like a lava orange or something, but, um, but I think it just gives it like, um, a little bit of standing out from the crowd. And at the same time, it's just pretty to look at. So I thought it was well worth the $3,270. So moving on, uh, now wheels, this is an interesting one because with wheels, you've got a couple of choices. You could go with the standard GTS wheels, which are center lock, or you could go with Carrera S wheels. And actually, if you do that, what's interesting is you can actually choose it um, to be silver, which is the default color, or you can option it to be same color as the car, which I think is a little strange, but let's, let's just click on this so you can see what I'm talking about. There you go. Shark blue wheels on a shark blue car, to me, that's, uh, that's just a little much. So I didn't opt for that, but I thought it was a really interesting choice that they offer. Instead, I went with the spider wheels, which are a no-cost option, which I think are actually a really good-looking wheel, and they differentiate it from... Because you know, obviously you can get the spider wheels with the S and 4S. Uh, by making it just a matte black, um, I think... You know, for me, I, I'm not a huge fan of black wheels, but the GTS does have a black theme incorporated into what other uh, variants of the 911 would have as a chrome piece. So uh, to me, black makes sense here. Um, I opted for these wheels mostly because I didn't want to deal with center locks. I mean, center locks are great, don't get me wrong, especially for track use. But, you know, I think the, the, the idea behind them is interesting. It's should be faster to remove on a racetrack and swap out wheels and stuff. But anybody who's owned center locks knows that's not really true. <laughs> Matter of fact, it's kind of a pain in the butt because you've actually got to do torque specifications that are really, really high. I think it's like 462 foot pounds or something like that. Um, and there's a procedure. It's not like you just tighten it and it's good. So for me, I didn't see this as, um, you know, a, a option that makes my ownership of the car better because for the most part, this is a street car. It will do some track time, but I think in general, what you're gonna find is it is um, a little bit more of a pain in the butt to live with uh, and then also limits your uh, ability to take it to a tire shop that might not have uh, the ability to um, throw those center locks on. So anyway, long story short, five lug works for me. Now, moving on. Um, obviously you've got lots of options when it comes to interior. I thought really long and hard about going with this sort of, um, well, a couple interiors. Like I liked the idea of a bright interior because to me, like this brightness in contrast with the blue 
it just looks hot to me. Like I just, I just think that looks so great. But I also kind of like tried imagining myself living with it. And, you know, and I don't know, maybe somebody in the comments can, can update me. But if you have this sort of whitish, um, leathery material, what's it like to live with on the daily? Because I imagine myself getting in and out with jeans and then looking down and seeing some like slight blue hazing from my jeans or something. <laughs> like, you know, I don't want to be in that position. So I just decided to play it safe. And also for resale value, I think it was a safe bet to do a GTS interior. Um, it's also a really good package here. You can see it cost, you know, roughly 4,500 bucks. Um, but you get a lot for your money here because it's not just what's in the, you know, the material of the seats, which by the way, there's two materials here, right? There's the race tax in the centers and you get the leather on the outside with the deviated stitching, which is either chalk in color or carmine red. Um, I actually really like Carmine Red, and I would have gone with that, except for the fact that the car's blue. Some people like the contrast between blue and red in their car, but I kind of think it looks a little too like Superman DC-ish for me. Like, I, I just don't think it, I think it kind of clashes a little bit. That's a subjective thing. But for me, I was like, okay, I want this thing to not stand out in that regard. So the safe bet is chalk. Um, with this interior, you can see a few things um, are also added in to this package, which is you actually get the upgraded color in the rev dial, which is also chalk, and in the uh, chrono package dial, which is also chalk. So that is thrown in. You get the leather on the dashboard, leather on the doors, obviously all deviated stitching, and, oops, let me go this way. You also get the chalk seat belts, both front and back. I mean, 4,500 bucks, better for resale value, kind of made sense. And also, like in this configurator, I don't think it looks that great. Like the configurator is a great configurator, but I think this is this, the type of interior that looks way better in person. And I've seen some in person, not on the 992s, but the prior gens, and I always thought they looked really, really nice. So um, I'm pretty excited to see this. Um, all right, moving on. Seat wise, you know, obviously you, you can do the four way. Uh, I opted to do the 18 ways because I, I plan on living with this car for a while and I want my wife to also uh, be comfortable in the car too. So, you know, yeah, it's an expensive upgrade at over $3,000 for the 18 ways versus the four ways. But, you know, if you're enjoying the experience of the car, um, you're probably happier with the car. And I think this really adds to that experience. It was tempting <laughs> to go with the full, full carbon buckets again, but I need to be able also to take my kids on drives. And though this does have a back seat, um, you know, if it's just me and my son, especially when he's older, uh, uh, just an easy booster can pop him into the front, have a better, you know, um, vantage point to the driving experience. And that was kind of an extra bonus. Uh, packages. So, there are quite a few to choose from. Um, obviously, we're not doing the leather interior package because we already got the, uh, the custom GTS package, but I opted to do the premium package here because when you look at what the premium package comes with, it's actually a pretty good savings. I mean, you get power folding window, uh, mirrors, sorry. Um, you know, the mirrors, you don't think they're, um, that big a deal. I mean, on my GT3, I didn't get the power folding mirrors, but when I'm pulling into my garage, I mean, there was very little room on both sides. I like the idea where I can just hit a button, have them fold versus getting out of the car, folding them and then backing in. Um, surround view. I mean, I don't know if that's going to be a great option or not, but it's nice to have it. That's where you have cameras all around the car. It helps you with your parking when you're in reverse. Um, lane change assist. I actually don't like this, <laughs> but you know, if my wife drives the car, I think it'll be nice for her to have that uh, extra safety measure just because the 992, it, it's just, it's a big car. I mean, I've driven the 991s and I thought those were, they felt big compared to the 997 because they are. The 992 is slightly, just slightly bigger than the 991s, but it feels actually like a bigger step from the 991 to the 992 than it actually is. 
So having just a little bit of extra safety measure there, I think it's just a, a good thing to have. Ambient lighting, I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer. Just makes the interior nice with uh, various lighting uh, that you can choose. Uh, and then storage package, that's just basically a little net that goes onto the footwell on the passenger side. That's actually a free option, so whatever. Um, but I do like that it throws in the Bose uh, sound system because personally, uh, I didn't realize how much I would miss having a nice stereo. Um, but when I got my GT3, I actually opted for just the bass system <clears throat> and that was a mistake. I mean, I couldn't even like hear phone calls very well because the speakers were really just inadequate um, because they were trying to save on weight. When you're trying to save on weight, the magnet behind the speaker is what is shrinking and the smaller the magnet, really the worse the, the sound that comes out is. But I don't need a Burmeister like crazy expensive sound system, which it's a $4,000 option here, which actually is not a bad deal. Um, I think the Bose will be fine, so I just stuck with that. Uh, moving along. Uh, wasn't going to do the lightweighting package again because that pushes this car more, to more towards a GT3 kind of um, build. And if I'm going to do that, might as well just kept the GT3. Uh, on the exterior, lots of options here. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not really a fan of moon roofs and, and sliding roofs. Um, I, I tend to find I never use them when I have them. <laughs> so uh, I decided just to do the carbon fiber roof. I, I like the contrast with the shark blue. And I like the added benefit that it actually does help a little bit of performance. I think it's like one or two pounds uh, from having a slick top, weight savings wise. But it's quite uh, a savings versus the moon roof. So uh, from that perspective, it was good. You know, I really was going back and forth with the aero kit. I like the idea of the aero kit, um, but I just feel like this is the type of car where, I don't know, I think, it's, I think it actually looks really, really great without a wing, but I'm a wing guy, I like wings. However, I don't like this wing. This wing, for some weird reason, to me it looks a little funky. It's kind of like the pedestal of it right here is just, I don't know, it's just a big, thick chunk. I feel like they could have done something a little bit more sculpted uh, for aerodynamics, um, and maybe I would have felt the other way. But I just don't like this view, what it does to the back. Now from the front, having this little kick up, I do like that. Um, but it wasn't enough for me to want to go for it. Also during the, the time of my build, I don't think the aero kit was available. I could have waited, but again, I think wingless uh, works just, just right. It looks great on this car. And you do have the mechanical um, wing that pops out the back at speed. Um, now you can do high gloss options, which basically just take a lot of the matte parts of the car, like this bottom diffuser, the wheels, the front lip, uh, this black underneath the mirrors. And it, and it actually just paints instead of matte black, gloss black. I didn't do that. Um, you know, I, I kind of feel like the car looks kind of mean when it's more matte. I think if it's glossier, I don't know. To me, it just it's more for looks than anything else, but I want to use this car. And if you've ever taken your car on like a country road and then gotten back, you've probably noticed there's a ton of bugs splattered everywhere. And on glossy black surfaces, that just doesn't like look good or clean off easy. But on matte, it doesn't really matter as much and it seems to come off easier. Uh, so I, I opted not to get that, but I did do, and I'm probably going to regret this, but I actually did do um, the protection film on the front of the car. And the reason why is because, you know, I really felt like I want to be able to drive this on day one. Uh, and actually, I've got a road trip coming up uh, where I am going to be taking this car, assuming that it gets to me in time. So I wasn't gonna have time to get it professionally PPF'd, so I felt like that was a reasonable cost to do. It's basically the, the front half of the car. It's the front bumper, the front fenders, the hood, uh, and maybe the mirrors. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see if that was a good purchase or not. I have heard that the material they use is really, really thin in comparison to what you could get at a professional detail shop. So I don't know, I'll, maybe I'll update you guys down the road on that one. Okay, so moving along these options now, um, I did do under door puddle light projectors. <laughs> I know it's a little cheesy, 
but come on. I mean, it's it's only 160 bucks, and I think. Um, you know, there'll be there'll be moments when it'll become like a point of conversation with somebody who's never seen something like that. So I thought that was fine. Um, <clears throat> I like having the decals on the car. I thought about doing a stripe. I didn't. Um, I could always add that later. Thank you to Suncoast um, Parts.com. They have a ton of great stuff for Porsches, so check them out. Um, but scrolling down. Um, Let's see, what else did I do here? I did do the exclusive fuel cap. I mean, another 160 bucks. It's not a big deal, but just a small added little touch where you get a nice looking fuel cap. Oh, I guess we're not showing it here. Versus just the plasticky black one that comes with it standard. Um, other than that, let's go to the performance stuff. So the PDK, interestingly enough, is the default option. So I guess that's Porsche's way of saying like, we kind of would prefer you, or we think it's spec best as a PDK. Um, but you know, I, I just, I still want a stick for a little bit longer. I, I enjoy driving stick. I've never had the seven speed, but from what I can tell, this seven speed is a little bit more refined. They've changed it from the original seven speeds from the 991, where it really is like a six speed with a seventh overdrive. So. You know, we'll see how that works out, but um, I'm pretty excited to be driving this in a stick, especially with the turbos and the torque down low. It should be pretty cool. Um, I decided to keep the standard suspension. I mean, yes, you could go with the PASM, which raises the suspension up and actually softens it a little bit than the sportier shocks that come with it. But I, I just kind of felt like this car should have something in it to remind you that it is a sports car. Um, even if it's a daily, like this is a step down from the GT3. So it should be actually a good balance. So I kept that, but I did do dynamic chassis control um, for quite a bit of money more because you also have to do rear axle steering if you get that. So that basically has, you know, the, the roll bar control unit and also rear axle steering. Rear axle steering is almost a must. I think in this type of car, you have to get it um, because it's just gonna make the car drive so much better, especially at low speeds where turning radius is an issue. So in case you don't know, rear axle steering actually helps turn the wheels in the back in conjunction with the wheels in the front, but at different speeds, it does it differently. So I think under 30 miles an hour, it actually turns it in conjunction or actually, I'm sorry, opposite direction. So if you're turning left like that, it'll turn them right. So that way you have a tighter radius. Um, I think above 45 miles an hour, it, it turns them, here your front wheels, front wheels are going like that on the freeway, your back wheels are gonna go like that on the freeway too. So it's actually gonna zip you around a lot more um, direct and in an agile fashion. So that's, that's a pretty cool sensation. Fuel tank, get the extended fuel tank. I mean, unless you're doing um, you know, club racing and you really want to do weight savings. I mean, a 16 gallon, 16 whatever point, whatever gallon tank that comes standard versus the 23.7, it's just worth it. Especially if you're, if you're doing like a road trip, um, stopping less at the gas pipe and uh, the gas tank is a good idea. Um, I opted no PCCBs kind of for the same reason I didn't want center locks. It's a great idea, but in general, these are the upgraded steel brakes. Um, it's not gonna be a full-time track car. I think steel brakes are really, really good and a lot cheaper. Yeah, you're gonna be replacing them a little bit more frequently, but you know, at a reduced cost. Oh, and by the way, there are companies that make um, you know, com composite ceramic brake upgrades in case you ever wanna do that down the road. Um, and actually, cheaper <laughs> than the Porsche ones. By the way, with Porsche uh, PCCBs, um, I don't know 100%, but this is what I keep hearing. I've heard it a few times, which is if you, like for example, if one of those rotors gets chipped, you actually have to replace that axle with rotors. So it's not just one, you have to replace them both. Um, and that's very, very expensive. So just didn't want to deal with it. Um, I did do brake calipers in black. And if we take a look at that, See, when they're red, I, I just feel like it, it was that Superman thing again, but when it's black, it just seems to flow a little bit better with, you know, the, the cars, um, you know, just the, the ethos of the car, if you will. 
Um, I definitely did the front axle lift system. If you see my driveway, you'll understand why. Um, what else did I do? I didn't do the LED matrix lights because when I was specking this out, um, those actually weren't, um, they weren't actually US legal. So you can get them, but like they wouldn't actually function the way um, they're designed to. So I just kind of felt like, why bother? But since then, now they are. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess I, I'm asked out on that one. However, Suncoast Parts does carry these lights too. So you can actually swap them out. And, and the 911 light, like modules, the fixtures, they actually pop out really easily. You could always upgrade them later on if you want. Um, let's see, I didn't do any of that stuff. Um, da, 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 da. Didn't do any of this. You know, on the interior, there is one thing I did do, which is, let me see if I can find it here. Center console right here, bam. I actually did do this one where on the center console, they just stamped the word Porsche, the name Porsche right there on that armrest. Like the, the package that it comes with, I mean, it's, it, it's wrapped in Alcantara, but, or sorry, race text, but I just thought it was a nice little touch to have it actually stamped with Porsche there and uh, just one extra little touch. So I did do that. Um, and I think that's about it. Everything else looks about right. Um, so let's take a look at what we got. All right. So shark blue, black accents, GTS interior, um, seven speed. And there you have it. I mean, it's, uh, you know, just a well specced GTS and, um, you know, I'm pretty excited to get it. I, I know it's, it actually has just as an update, it, it looks like in the configurator, um, actually not on the configurator, but in the, my Porsche app, you can actually track, uh, more or less where the car is and it's hit or miss depending on when you refresh. But, um, mine is showing that it's reached the destination port and it's actually sitting being processed as we speak. Now, the next step is how long will it stay in processing at the port? That's really up to the port authority. Um, once it clears customs, then it's got to get on a truck and then be driven 40 miles to the dealership where then they need a day or so with it to take it out of uh, delivery mode and PDI it and uh, take off all the wrapping and clean it up and all that good stuff. Um, but what's interesting is I thought about this because when my uh, GT3 showed up, it actually went from the day it hit the port to the dealership in like six days. It was really, really fast. I got a feeling it's gonna be longer on, on this GTS delivery. And I think it's because my car probably got there early and now it, it, it's probably one of the first cars sitting there making it to this dealership. In other words, they gotta wait for more boats to come delivering more cars for that dealership to fill up the trucks <laughs> or a truck that's gonna be delivering the cars to that dealership versus just hiring a truck to take one car 40 miles. So they're not gonna do that. They're gonna let it sit there uh, and wait for the other cars to show up, process, and then load up the whole truck so that way they're getting the most for their delivery. And unfortunately it means that I'm uh, <laughs> sitting on pins and needles, excited, but no visibility as to when it will actually arrive. So anyway, if you guys watch this point, thanks for watching. Um, there is some uh, more exciting news coming up. I will not quite tell you guys about the, the next interesting thing that's gonna happen in the next few months, but I will be doing some videos specifically around the GTS once it shows up, so stay tuned for that. If you guys have any questions, feel free to put them down below and um, we'll go from there. Thanks folks, catch you on the next one.